All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use Docker to deploy your Node.js application. Docker is an extremely powerful virtualization tool, and many, many companies use it to streamline their pipelines. Docker makes it extremely easy to deploy your Node.js package, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to construct your own Docker file and then make your own Docker image and container out of it. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you already have Docker installed, whether you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, it should all work generally the same way. For Windows, there's a few extra steps you have to do to install it, but once you do have it installed and you're able to access it from either your PowerShell or your Git Bash, the only other thing you need for this tutorial is some form of Node.js project. I'm just using a sample project that I made in the past. It's nothing special, but it's just going to show you how I can deploy a RESTful API into Docker and still access it, even though it's inside of a Docker container. It's the easiest example I could think of, but you can use any sort of backend project you want. You can't automatically install a React project into Docker. There's a few more steps that you need for it, and that will be covered in another video. All right, guys, let's dig into it. So go to the root directory of your project and create something called a Docker file. Make sure you capitalize the D and just write Docker file as one word. Now, when you're declaring a Docker file, you have to create your file from a base Docker image that already exists. We're going to be using one on the internet, and it's going to be called node colon 17. So how you write this is you write the word from in all capitals, telling the Docker file, this is where we're going to get our base image from and simply declare node colon 17. And this will automatically tell Docker to look inside of Docker's public registry and look for a container that has the name and tag node 17. If you haven't figured it out, node 17 means that this base container will contain Node.js version 17 for us to work with. The next thing we're going to declare is something called a work directory with the keyword work dir also all capitals as all the keywords are and then you're going to put a path somewhere inside the container that's going to contain your project after you specify a work directory all other commands that you run are going to assume that that is the starting point from which you want to reference the paths you could put anything you want here but we're going to be using user source app a normal linux directory the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my package.json files over to my container. That's because the package.json is the base of all Node.js projects. I'm going to put a little star here before the .json so it grabs my package and my package lock. The next step is going to be using the run keyword, and I'm going to run a command npm install prettier-g. The reason that I'm doing this is because all of my projects, I use prettier. And inside of my build command that you can see referenced here inside of my package.json, you can see that I run prettier on my code beforehand. You don't necessarily have to do this step. This is optional for you, but I like to install any globals that I'm going to need to run node CLI commands with. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run npm install. This is just going to install everything from my package.json into a node modules folder inside the container. The next thing that I want to do is I want to copy my source files over. I'm going to do this with a copy period space period, meaning that I'm going to copy everything inside of the folder where my Docker file exists into my work directory. Now you're probably wondering why would I do this? I don't want to copy over the node modules folder or the build folder if I'm going to just build it inside the container. And that's because we have to create a Docker ignore file. So we're going to do that after we finish with this file. Next, I'm going to call an npm run build. Since I'm using TypeScript, I have my npm run build command in my package.json and I have the out directory in my TS config set to build. Make sure you have your TypeScript configuration configured properly. Our second last command is going to be a keyword called expose. This will expose any ports that you want it to. So we want the port 1337 as my API runs on that specified port. You can make this an environment variable. You can do whatever you want with this, but this is just a basic example to show you how to actually expose it inside of the Docker file. So lastly, we're going to create our CMD. This is our command that we're going to run to actually run our build. This is essentially just whatever shell command you're going to use to run your build. We're going to use node and we're going to have that as a string. And then the next string inside of the string array is going to be build forward slash server.js. Basically, anytime you have a space inside of a shell command, give it a new string inside of this array. You'll also notice that I specified build forward slash server.js and I didn't specify the work directory. That's because the work directory is already declared at the top, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. This is everything we need for our Docker file. We transfer over our package.json's, we install the packages we need, we copy over our source material, we run the build, and then we run it with the exposed port. 
So now let's go ahead and create our Docker ignore file. So create a new file called dot docker ignore, kind of like your git ignore file here. And inside of it, just add the folders you don't want it to take over or the files. We're going to run node modules build dot VS code. And I'm going to put the NPM dash debug log. Sometimes that pops up. Now that we have our Docker ignore file, we can take a look at actually building our Docker image. Right now, this file is just telling us what to do or how to build the image, but we haven't actually built it yet. So now let's go ahead and open up our terminal and actually start playing around with some Docker commands. The first command we're going to run is docker ps a, and this is gonna tell us if we have any containers currently running. You see that when I type it in here, I don't have any containers running, so you just get the headers and nothing else shows up. The next command I'm going to run is docker images, and this will tell me if I have any images built or images downloaded on my computer. You can see here that when I type it in, I do have an image, but, but this image isn't relevant to what we're doing right now. So I'm going to clear the console here. I'm going to change directory back one directory, and I'm going to show you how to run your docker build command. The docker build command is pretty simple. You're going to type docker space build. Then you're going to specify the directory that you want. Next, you're going to do a dash T because we're going to tag it, which means we're going to name it. You're going to do a docker example and put a colon and then put latest. That's a similar syntax to when we declared from node 17. So you might recognize the syntax already. Now, when you run the actual command, you can see all the steps here that you defined in your Docker file being built into this image for you. Now let's clear the console one more time and run this image as our new Docker container. To do this, we're gonna type docker run as our command. We're gonna do a dash dash name. You're gonna give your container a name. I'm just gonna call mine API. Then you're gonna do a dash P to expose a port. How you do this is you declare the port on the inside of the container on a, and on the outside. It's going to be 1337 mapped to 1337, but you can pick a different port if you would like. Then do a forward slash TCP on the back of that last number, and this will specify to open this port for all TCP traffic. Next, do a dash D, which means run detached or in the background. If you don't do this, the container will run inside of your terminal, and as soon as you exit the terminal, the Docker container will shut down. So doing it detached, we'll run it in the background. And then you have to just drop in the name of the actual container. And ours is just going to be called Docker example. You don't have to add the tag, but you can if you want to be specific about the container you pick. I tagged mine as latest, but realistically, you should be tagging them as versions. If you don't give it a tag, it will run the latest version of that image. So go ahead and run that command and then run a docker ps-a, and you'll see that that container is now running. Next, you, what you can do is you can run a docker logs-f, and then the name of your container, so API, where you can actually see the output of the console inside of your container. So if you want to actually look at it without turning off your container, this is how you do it. So I'm going to go ahead and just start testing my API, making sure it's running. So I'm just going to bring up my Postman and start sending my API requests. And you can see here that I'm getting a 200 returned. And when I look at the console, you can see that the Docker logs is showing me what's happening inside of my API, nice and simple. So now inside of your console, go ahead and clear all this and type Docker kill API, and then that will shut down your container. But your container is still technically there, it's just not turned on. So run a Docker RM API, and then it'll remove the container completely. So now when we run a docker ps-a, nothing will show up again. So we're starting from a clean slate. Now, some of you may notice the docker icon inside of my left toolbar in Visual Studio Code. And this is a plugin made by Microsoft that actually helps you test your containers quicker than actually running the commands inside of the console. So let's take a look at it really fast. Go ahead and install this. And then when you go and look inside of the actual plugin, you can see that it has a list of containers, images, and all sorts of commands that you can run. So you can see here, if I right click on my latest image and hit run, it actually starts running the container for me almost exactly the way we ran it in the console. So if I was to bring up my Postman again, you could see that it would start working again. And that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to get started with Docker. You don't necessarily need 
all of the fancy tools like Visual Studio Code's plugin and things like that. But all of those console commands I just showed you should be more than enough to get you started as long as you have Docker installed properly. Thank you so much for tuning back in, guys. I appreciate all the support. Please like and subscribe. And if you're feeling really generous, buy me a coffee so I can make you some more videos. See you later, guys.